Football video games are big business. I can't believe it! I do not believe it! Vamos! The genre dominated by two titles. People would kill to be in the position of FIFA. Those were the glory days of Pez. But in 2020, one of those titles generated more money than football itself. This is stupid! What has happened? In 2008, the rivalry was very much alive, with Konami's Pro Evolution Soccer 09 selling 6.9 million copies, compared to EA Sports FIFA 09 with 8.7. But by 2014, Pez sales had dwindled to 1.7, while FIFA had ballooned to 18 million. So how did EA break away? And is it possible to identify one title that changed everything? In 1993, EA Sports released FIFA International Soccer, the first incarnation of the series and only featured national teams. The early 90s was like when I started. Uh, I think I started playing when I was like six. Do you remember the first FIFA title you played? The very first one we had, because I've got two older brothers, so we had a Mega Drive. The very first one was FIFA, maybe 95 or 96, which I didn't get into because I was too young. I actually played the first ever FIFA. And the one, the best feature about it was that like, if you got a yellow card, you could just like run around and like the referee could never chase you. It was good. Cause like, if you're playing your friends, you just keep running. You just do that for about 30 minutes and your friend just gets angry and just like, you never finish the game. So you never lose. By 1996, Konami had weighed in to take on EA Sports with their first release, Gold Storm, or Winning Soccer 11 in Japan. A year later marked the release of International Superstar Soccer Pro, or ISS for short. These are the precursors to Pro Evolution Soccer, to the PES games that we know now, and they were absolutely fantastic. For a long time, uh, football games had a very obvious way to score. Because of the isometric camera, it was very easy to line up with uh, the goal and just basically nail it every single time. Superstar Soccer created a sense of randomness, I guess. And, you know, in football, in real life, the ball often does random things that, you, you know, footballers can't control. It got that sense across. And I think that was one of the reasons why, you know, those games were so popular at the time. By 2001, Konami were in control. With their first release of the evolved title, Pro Evolution Soccer, outselling the number of units sold of EA's FIFA Football 2002. Those were the glory days of PES. I was at university at the time. All of my friends were playing PES. And the memories I've got of playing PES with my friends at university are some of the fondest gaming memories I have. It was PES 5 when my brother brought PES 5 and it had Thierry Henry, John Terry on the cover. And I'd never really been into these games before. And then that one, was the one that just, I think the thing is with those games is that it was so simple and because it allowed you to customize so much stuff, your imagination could just basically go wild. That Z down there popping his head through and then uh, Joey Coley next and then the goalkeeper Ivorov, who's another like Pez legend. But Dodo is the guy who I had a fight with. You're saying I'm not good enough. You're not good enough, son. In fact, come here, come here and say that Dodo. Yeah, he battered me to be fair, but because we're both, both quite hard men of football and you know that's what happens yeah you come on you dodo is that all you got i think my ribs i think they're all broken the whole thing of the way it captures your imagination you become the manager and you know you can actually imagine yourself doing team talks before a big game and stuff you know and i think that's the way a lot of people play these football games Could you send castodo in please hi boss have you been saying things about Cinema Pongo's hat? No, boss. I never said nothing about his hat, boss. What did you say about his hat, Castola? And I was honestly, I really thought that this thing I was planning of being the manager with like a suit on and actually doing team talks, I was so certain that a lot of guys would have already done it. I thought there was probably some huge FIFA people that had done this thing already. And so I thought, well, it would be my take on it kind of. But then it turned out like no one has done it, which blew my mind. But despite the success and cultural legacy of Pro Evolution games, by 2006, the balance of power started shifting when Xbox and PlayStation released their next generation consoles. The transition to the PS3 is a crucial moment in the fate of, of PES. EA came out with the new engine for FIFA, um, which improved the gameplay side of things. So it, it made it match up with uh, Konami on that end for PES. PES could always say we have the best gameplay and it did. But with that transition, they, lo they lost that and they were unable to say that they had the best gameplay and FIFA started to have the best gameplay. Oh, that's just magical. It's an unbelievable. Is it possible to pinpoint like 
the one game, either from a gameplay perspective or from, like um, you mentioned, from a technical or market share perspective, that is the, the kind of the most important one, the most yeah. important game? Well, I think it's really important to point out FIFA 09. EA Sports release in 2008, FIFA 09, had Ronaldinho and Wayne Rooney on the cover, and a particular feature that was to debut that year was Ultimate Team, which was an optional £8 add-on, and unbeknownst to both companies at the time, was about to change the future of football gaming. Basically, Ultimate Team is what did it. That's where Konami dropped the balls. I don't think they took online very seriously. And then EA came in, they got the licenses, uh, which is pivotal to the marketing and it's just they just kind of ran away with it from there This mode is one of the most significant video game modes of all time Reimagined what revenue could be and engagement could be for sports video game any video game Even though ultimate team grew into one of the biggest gaming phenomenons of all time It did take time to get going I started working at EA Sports uh, in 2012. I came on halfway through FIFA 12, I believe. My job at the time, believe it or not, was to popularize and manage the, the community for uh, FIFA Ultimate Team. At the time, you didn't tell how much of a revolution you're starting, kind of. It wasn't such a full driving force of revenue at the time. So like, we could just kind of do this, do that. Every once in a while, someone will come check in and like, okay, these guys are like making a lot of money, like, but. I just do keep doing your thing, you know, uh, then I think like after 14 is when they're like, whoa, OK, this is literally like a giant chunk of revenue that is driving the entire company. From the foundations laid by the relatively quiet introduction of FIFA Ultimate Team, EA Sports broke away and never looked back. Uh, EA's grip on licensing is so tight and Konami's resources are nowhere near as vast as EA's and what Konami is doing is basically fighting for scraps. It's signing deals with some clubs. Um, it's doing um, licensing work for some leagues across the world. But the big licenses are now probably locked in with FIFA for, for you know, for the next decade at least. Can anyone realistically compete with EA? Um, I. Personally, don't think so. I mean, we'll see what Konami has up their sleeves because, you know, they took a year off this past year. They actually didn't release a brand new game in the series for the first time in years in an attempt to make sure that the next version is comes out on next generation consoles, the PS5 um, and the Xbox Series X and S and really makes the most of it, really nails that console transition because they know how badly it went for them before, they know how important it is for them to get it right now. Like I mentioned before, nowadays it's not even about the gameplay anymore. It's just about what people are talking about, what gets people excited, what gets, you know, the marketing, the um, just the involvement with real world of football. Well, if anything of this last year has told us anything, that crazy things can happen. That's true. But um, thinking about like sort of the most released, uh, most recent versions of both games, um, how would you compare them in terms of gameplay as they stand now? Do you think? Um, I still think FIFA is superior in terms of gameplay. Um, and you know, people might say, "Oh, you know, you're a FIFA fan, boy. You're a FIFA fan." No, like I really want Pez to be good because if Pez is good, there's competition. Competition breeds innovation. So that means if there's competition, then FIFA has to improve. So if you're a FIFA fan, you like, I pray the Pez is good. Like I'm not a joke. I pray every day that it's going to be good because if it's good, then FIFA and EA Sports have to bring their A game. If the game can be anywhere near as good as like Pez 5 was in terms of the gameplay, I think it could really be a big thing. So I'm really hoping it will be like that.